Hi, Tom Warrender here from Classroom Medics. I'm here at the Bristol Royal Infirmary at the Eye Hospital, and I'm just about to get my retina pictured on this fancy camera, and then we're going to find out what ophthalmic science is all about. Okay, right, so I'm going to put that a bit higher. Okay, and this is actually easy. Nothing horrible is going to happen on this one. <laughs> Okay, so you pop forward and just see how that feels for you. Your chair might need to come a tiny bit nearer. Okay. Should I, should I put you a bit higher? I can go a bit higher. Okay. So we're just going to take an OCT scan and photograph of the back of Tom's eye, of, of his retina. Tom, if you could please look at the centre of the green cross. And we should see a scan appearing. That's it, good. And you just hold nice and still now. Okay, that's done. You can sit back, Tom. Thank you. Well done. That's so cool. Yep. <laughs> so we've got some information here about Tom's retina. On the right-hand side, I can enlarge the picture of his retina. The round, white, pink-coloured disc is the top of Tom's optic nerve, and the red wavy lines are the blood vessels. So we've got an area in the middle here which is slightly darker and doesn't have any blood vessels and that's called the macula. And the macula is important because that's responsible for so much of the seeing, um, the fine detail of, of things that we see. If we go back to the main picture, we have an image on the left hand side which is Tom's retina as if he was led on his back. So. If we imagine that, that Tom's led down, the front of his eye is up here with his eyelashes and his pupil. We look through his pupil all the way through the vitreous, which is the jelly of the eye, and then we come to the retina. So this red line here represents what we call the RPE, which is the layer of pigment in Tom's eye, which is what gives it this orangey colour here. The little dip down in the middle is what everybody has in their eye if it's a healthy eye and that is the macula area so the little area there the darker bit is that area there with the little dip there and because the scan has taken quite a, a large area of information it's scanned all the way through this square as I move up through the picture we move up through Tom's eye and we get a lot of information about his retina there OCT can also do is to take the information that we've got from Tom's eye and put it into a 3D format. So what we're looking at here is the top of Tom's retina. So we can see that there's a little dip down in the middle. That's the macular area that we've already just seen. And if I rotate it round, you can see from a 3D point of view very clearly that little dip down in the middle there. And then we have the other layers of retina on the front side there. So this is very useful for being able to see information about the health of somebody's retina. So here we've got a video of the fluorazine fundus angiography. The patient has had some fluorescent dye injected into their vein. It takes a few seconds to travel through the blood circulation and then it appears in the retina. The blood vessels are black to start with before they have the dye in and then as they fill with dye they'll go a very bright glowing white colour which is the fluorazine. Uh, the arteries fill first, you can see the, the dye travelling through those and then a few moments later the veins fill as the blood is drained out of the tissues and is taken back to the heart. So this is useful for lots of different types of eye condition. Um, it helps the doctors diagnose and treat people's eye problems. What we've got here is an image of actually my optic nerve and you can see that we can get quite a lot of information from this picture. That's the top of my optic nerve there and I can rotate the picture around and we can see underneath and look the whole way round. So changes to the appearance of the optic nerve, the shape, the structure, the colour, how healthy it appears can be one of the tools that clinicians use to help them in monitoring or deciding if a patient has glaucoma. So we're just going to take a look at the front part of Tom's eye now. This is what we call an anterior segment OCT. So Tom, if you'd like to come and put your chin over there by that little blue sticker there, that's good. Just tilt forward so your forehead's touching, lovely. And Tom, I want you just to watch the 
little orange star inside. So we can see on our screen here that we're looking at the front area of Tom's eye now. I'm going to make him a little bit nearer. And then you hold nice and still, Tom. Have a little blink. And again. Okay, you can sit back, that's that done. So here is the scan we've just done of the front part of Tom's eye. We can see here, this domed shape is Tom's cornea. The area in the middle is called the anterior segment. Here is Tom's pupil. This is the, the dark circle in Tom's eye. And we can just about make out his lens, which is this slightly hazy bit in the centre. And then these two structures on either side are Tom's iris, and that's the coloured part of his eye there. So, unlike most of the cells Tom has in his body, the endothelial cells on the back of the cornea don't regenerate. The amount that you are born with are the, the, the most you're ever going to get, and they'll only decrease over time. So we're just going to take a look at the endothelial cells, which are the cells on the back of Tom's cornea. So Tom, if you'd like to just pop your chin forward into there, and we'll just have a little look. And if you just keep watching that little orangey coloured star, the machine will take an image. And big wide starry eye, well done. Good. And you can blink now, that's all done, well done. So here's the data that we've got from Tom's cornea. These are the endothelial cells. You can see that they are quite a distinct hexagonal shape. That's the sign of a, a healthy cornea. So important information for the doctors to want to know sometimes is the amount of cells Tom's got and their shape and their size. So we can see that um, it's telling us how many cells Tom has of a certain size and how many he has of um, a certain shape. What The important thing is how hexagonal they are. And we can see here that it's um, put information on the image here. So we're just going to take a photograph of the front of Tom's eye, which is useful for a lot of reasons. Tom, pop your head in. Good. And I'll just have a little look. We're just going to take a photograph of the front of Tom's eye, just of his iris. And Tom, you open up your eye really big and wide. Well done. Have a little blink. <laughs> So that's the photograph we've just taken of Tom's eye. And just to see all the different strands that the iris is made up of. Hi, Tom Warren here from Classroom Medics. Uh, I'm at Bristol Royal Infirmary uh, in the eye hospital and I'm just about to get my retina pictured on this fancy camera and we're going to find out all about um, I'll look at my words out. It's an ophthalmic scientist, isn't it? Yeah. Hi, Tom Warrender here from Classroom Medics. I'm here at the Bristol Royal Infirmary Eye Hospital. Hi, Tom Warrender here from Classroom Medics. I'm here at Bristol Royal Infirmary Eye Hospital, and I'm just about to get my eye pictured and get my retina pictured. I'll do that again. <laughs> 